Yo, people. Before we start today's episode, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors for this season, Watchbox UK. Based down in Hatton Gardens, they're leading the way in supplying you with the best prices for buying, selling and sourcing top of the range watches and high quality jewels. Head over to their Instagram, the link will be in the bio and make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Please enjoy the episode. Yes, people, and we're back with another episode of On The Judy and today's guest is a man that scored in all English football leagues from League 2. League One champ and the Prem, Jason Punchin. What's happening, man? Nah, man, it's good to see you, man. It's been a long time coming, so... Nah, we've been trying to get you on for like, nearly a year, bro, but we're here now. We'll, we'll um, hide the location for now, then we'll explain, for, for explain your story and explain why you're here and stuff. Um, do you know what? I get gassed speaking to another South London man because I feel like I tried to play football and you're like a, a version of me that's made it. So, like, I live kind of like my football career through you. What was it like growing up in, in Croydon and stuff? It was difficult. It was testing times. I think as a young footballer, when you're growing up in the ghetto, you've got friends, you're surrounded by probably all the things that doesn't point you to a football pitch. But, you know, you've always got a dream. Yeah. I chased that dream. And that's what I felt like I'd done. What was school like? Do you know what? School was, it was weird in school in, like, I originally went to Rockmount, which is in Crystal Palace. So I went to that school. And then my mum was like, you ain't going to secondary school around here. So she <laughs> sent me to school in West Wickham. Okay. Which was like an hour away from nice my house. Part. So she used to have to drop me to Annalee. Then I used to have to go there to get to the, to get the, the bus to get to school. So school was different. Uh, probably two different school ways that I grew up as such. Okay. So where did the love of football come? Because I've... We were to- I, was t- I was told not to mention this stuff, but like summer ball, mm. Palace Dome, mm. goals and stuff. But how did you become so good? Like where did the love come you from? You know what? Love of football come from. I used to live in a place called Rockmount Road. And the bottom of my road there used to be a park, Central Park. And every Saturday, probably 50, 60 kids used to go there and play football. We used to go there. And then I had my friend who's a white boy, Sammy. Big up Sammy if you can see this. <laughs> I hadn't seen him for years. His mum used to look after me as a kid. He used to play football for a Sunday team called Melwood. Okay, yeah. Bradley Rat Phillips played in it. Carol Rat Phillips played in it. And Sean used to come now and again. And they took me one time, but they was a year above me. So they took me. And then literally, I'd probably say from that, that's where I really kicked on. I must have been, I think I was seven, I started playing with them. They was like eight. So seven, they might have been eight, nine yeah. years of age. And I went with them one time and I never looked back and just carried on playing football from there. Oh, decent, decent. I feel like you need that that environment and understand what a team is and like team sports and stuff like that. Um, when did you realise that, like, or run up to mum and dad and say, Mark, like, I want to be a footballer. What, how old were you? I think when I started to go and play football with them and like, you're not being funny. Imagine being a kid and you're seeing Bradley Wright Phillips and Sean Wright Phillips and Carol Wright Phillips and people are stopping them making a commotion about them because of who they're dad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's when you realise. I think a lot of it started to stem when you start to play because you start to realise, do you know what, I'm playing against these players. I'm actually as good as them, if yeah. not better than them. And you start to realise the level maybe you can be or the level you're at at that moment. Did you understand who their dad was? Of course. <laughs> I was an Ian Wright fan. I supported Crystal Palace because okay, of Ian Wright. Yes, and then he yes. left to go Arsenal. I support Arsenal. Six, six, so six. Of course. Yeah. Man, it's mad because not a lot of people have that. Like, or if they do, mm. I think they struggle to keep up with that the same support they have. So Bradley and Sean will have untold amount of support from, from Bradley. I mean, from Ian. I'll call him Uncle Ian. And the other kids who are their friends will be like, oh, like I want to do this, but my mum can't, my mum's got to work and stuff like that. So it's good that you went from there, idolising them, to thinking, right, I'm as good as them. And then Yeah, yeah of it. course, because you idolise them. It's like it was... Even my dad. My dad never really... My dad wasn't really a football man. It's only when I started to play football, he started to really get into it. Yeah. So it wasn't a thing of like, you're three, four, your dad's saying, going to play football. It's only after a while they started to realise, you know, our son's actually good at football and they started to pursue it and push it, you know. But there is some kids out there that are, are born into football. They're sports people. They get that extra push. But I also feel when you're a, kid, a young kid, it's just about enjoying football. Yeah. Playing football with a smile on your face, whether you're playing at Arsenal, Crystal Palace, or you're playing Sunday football. Because you're not going to be, you're not made a professional football at 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15 years of age. You could not play academy football till you're 21. Yeah. And then you could make it. 100%. And I feel like there's a lot of parents these days that are taking their seven, eight-year-olds all over London, like Arsenal and week, Chelsea another day. 
and when do they when do they grow up when do they have fun as what because i always believe that to make it you've got to have fun because you're always going to play your best if you're stressed you're never going to play well yeah i think the kid like every one circumstance is different is for me i always believe that i used to love football when i used to go have a smile on my face i'll tell you a story i went to chelsea it used to take my mum an hour and 45 minutes to get there because we was in South London and we used to go, had to go all the way to West London, which was Heathrow by the training ground yeah, yeah. in traffic. My mum used to work. I used to have to maybe get a bus to Streatham to go and meet my mum from work. Then my mum would take me from there. It was stress for my mum. Mm. You know, and I could see that stress was stressing her. And then I would be stressing the car. And then you go to football stressing the car. And then you're not performing the best that you can. The best thing that I can say that from in my instance and what I also felt as a kid is, is go in somewhere you're happy. Play with a smile on your yeah, face. That can never be, even in professional football, is a young kid, the worst you thing you can do is make them feel like it's a chore. Let them feel this enjoyment. Right, so I feel like, I'm not to diss the way football is at the minute because it's producing some amazing talent. Some go off like different countries and shine on, but it's just a bit robotic. And then there are some parents that take their good kids out of that system just so they can have fun again and be kids. But yeah, I think right. it's... It's natural. I think the world's changed. Social media, the the influence of that, of personal trainers on social media, of players showing this on that, all these nah. type of things you've got in front of your eyes now, changes the dynamics. But fundamentally, uh, whatever level you play, if you cannot play with a smile on your face or going there happier, feeling good about your environment, you're <laughs> never going to reach the level you could. Nah, I fully understand that. And that's a, that's one gem we're going to count. We're going to count them. We're going to count. That's, that's the first one. Um... I think the fir first pro club I heard you, you signed for was Wimbledon. No. No? Crystal Palace. Crystal, so it's you signed funny. at Crystal Palace. Okay. So it's funny. I, I'll never forget this day. Um, <laughs> Stevie Kemba as well. He was a good coach. <laughs> my mum, it's funny because I, I had a good affili affiliation with Palace from Milan. My nan used to live on Clifton Road. Okay. <laughs> my mum used to work at Crystal Palace. So he was... Then we played a game. It was... Bradley and Sean had left by then, actually. Yeah, they, they had left. But same team, Melwood. We played against Crystal Palace's under 11s at the time and we beat them 8 nil. and Ron Nodes come in and signed all I think 13 <laughs> of our players all 13 but the first day for some reason because I was a bit of a like I wasn't a shy kid yeah so if I was walking when I walked past the first thing because it was at two in the Mitchum's ground that's where the Crystal Palace oh, was okay, yeah, yeah. and Stephen Kemba Clinton Morrison was there this day they was playing head tennis it was like under 20 under 18s or 19 yeah. ones playing head tennis and it was like, back then you could have a bit more banter with first team people. Stevie Kemba and Clinton was like, do you want to play little man? I was like, yeah, come on in. So I ran over, started playing head tennis with them as a kid. And I'll never forget, I remember it to, to this day. Playing head tennis, and that made my day. And then I've sort of never looked back really from that. Okay. Shock it was Clinton that invited you around. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when did, when did you leave Palace to go Wimbledon? So I left, no, I left Palace. So I was, I left Palace at, signed at seven. I left there at 10 to go Chelsea and then I left I went to Chelsea from I was 10 till I was 13 nearly 14 okay but it was it was Chelsea was a difficult time because my mum had just had my just had my brother yeah just had my sister so she had two oh, that's young what kids she's doing there. two young kids under the age of four plus me and it become it, it did become difficult and also become I didn't like it I wasn't enjoying it yes 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 you know and it become like I was playing a game here not playing a game there not necessarily because I wasn't Good enough, just because of the fact that I wasn't actually able to get there. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was difficult yeah. for my parents. My dad worked nine to five. My dad couldn't change his role. He was a he was a builder, so it was difficult. So then I left there. It was I used to play for Paul Elliott Football Academy as well. Who's that? Paul Elliott Football okay, Academy. Okay, okay. I'm not sure if he's still going. You know, it's funny that like, Paul Elliott is a good guy as well. And they took me to Wimbledon. I went to Wimbledon actually. And do you know the maddest thing is going to Wimbledon. They're playing at Sellers Park. Yeah. So you still got that. Still got the affiliation <laughs> with the South London. Still was that there. that was after Crazy Gang? So this is like the same Crazy Gang. So I'll, who, I was, was a, who was there from the Crazy I Gang? I was a kid at that time. Okay, okay. Dean Holes. They was in the Premier League at that time when I went there. Dean Holesworth. They still had um, Kelvin Davis. I know Kelvin from, from my time at Southampton. Uh, Kenny Cunningham was there. Uh, you know, when I think Crazy Gang, I'm thinking of the old John Hartson might have still been there. I was a young kid at this time, okay, okay. so I wasn't really in the first team. So they were still there. Put, yeah, John Arson was there because it was the time when they burnt his suit. I remember. Yeah, it was the John Arson. <laughs> yeah, I heard their banter was. Yeah, yeah. Was that's crazy. Where I learned my banter from football at Wimbledon. Okay. Um, so when 
you're telling people I play for Wimbledon and everyone knows they're playing at Sellers Park. Is that like a, I got a big head, like I'm walking around like I'm the man kind of thing? No, I looked at Wimbledon at the time that I went there because I was, I think I was 14 and I had the option to go Wimbledon, Manchester and Liverpool. No, Blackburn and Liverpool. You're not leaving London. Right. And I'll never forget it. My mum was like, you need to go. I was like, no, no, no. Because I, like, I used to love my friends and yeah, yeah, our yeah. family. And you look back in hindsight and say, did you make the wrong decision? But I don't think I did because nah. it, being in London and avoiding all the things you can avoid to become a professional footballer. We'll get to that. So much. <laughs> we'll get to that. So that, that, that uh, I would never look back at it. And Wimbledon was a fantastic club, family club in terms of the people that looked after you. And then in the dressing room around the place, people taught you how to be men. What? But you need that. Yeah. You need that. A lot of young players need it. I don't feel like there's enough of it. I feel like, like you say, everyone's on big money, so they're like, who can really tell them something? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think com football, I've oh, been in football a long time and it has completely changed. Like you couldn't, like just example, you couldn't come in a first team training session at Wimbledon and not be at the races. <laughs> you couldn't not be running around or trying to do yeah. the best way you can. Because if you was, senior players or older players, they're going to let you have it. And That's... I feel that football's changed and it's, you're a bit more moddy coddled, you're a bit more putting your arms around people. Yeah. And I want me on the pitch, you can't put your arm around no one. You've got 90 minutes to win a football game. Facts. Facts. And a lot of people have forgotten that. But I've got a stat for you, or a fact. You are probably, or you are, the most successful player to play in that last Wimbledon team before they become MK Duns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've gone on and yeah. played Prem and played, yeah. and gone and got promotions. I think, me, like I think, I think it might have been me, Nigel. Nigel went to West Ham from there, from that Wimbledon. Yeah, but... Before, just before, like Nigel went and you stayed on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take, yeah, 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 you, yeah. You take the you take the crown. Own it, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I take it. I take it. I always. I just think back to those times of those people that, and I also think that football's changed so much now. Is is when I was coming through at Wimbledon, senior players helped me so much. Yes, so 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 much in the the guidance in what not to do, what to do. Come on, punch! You need to do this. That like, try and help me so much. That's why I always feel that when I'm. Southampton, Crystal Palace, I'd always try and help the young kids even now. I think it's, it's so, so vital. Well, that's good. So let me just jump a little bit. You had Wilf and Bellassi in your team. Yeah. Obviously, we'll get, to, we'll get to the Palace bit, but when you see two talented wingers who just want to do skills and just terrify defenders, what do you say to them? How do you keep them level? How do you keep them grounded? I think it's weird because I saw... It's, it's weird. I saw Balassi and Wilf at two different stages of their career. Balassi, when I first come to Palace, he was still that... He's, he's a rough diamond player, yeah. naturally. Still that rough diamond. Always thought it was about beating people, not that sort of end product. And then it's like, he come back one season, he's like, right, I'm going to get myself goals, going to get myself assist, assist. It's like he grew up. And then it's like, when Wilf come, you could sit like... Balassi's my friend, love him to yeah. pieces, right? But you could see Wilf has more in his tank than Balassi. But at that present moment in time, Balassi knew how to affect a Premier League game, how to do the right things, how to do it in the right way. And then his Wolf's grown slowly, slowly. And years and years afterwards at Palace, he started to become the player that he is today. That's good. That's sick. I bet you, as a Palace fan, you're happy for someone like that, like to be Mr. Palace. For me, the biggest thing for them, for them was is when we played in the FA Cup final. Because people always used to complain, oh, maybe they're not running back or maybe they're losing the ball doing this. And I've never seen two kids... The first thing before we even started this the game, they said, all I care about is doing my defending job today. Sick. And that showed me how much they had both grown up yeah, so yeah. much because they would have never have thought like that in the first place. And then it got to that and Blassie was like, listen, I'm making sure that he does not go past me today. I'm not worried about what I do. Make sure that happens and we can win the game. Wow, sick, sick. Brilliant. Like I said, we'll get to, we'll get to all of that FA Cup yeah. stuff because that's a game I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, think back to becoming MK Dons. Am I right in saying you went over with Wimbledon? Yeah, so it was weird because Pete Winkleman, lovely guy again, um, looked after me, took me on like a, almost like a, a second son, let me live in his house when we, we relocated. It was weird. He took over at Wimbledon because it was in liquidation. Yeah. In I think maybe it was a January or, oh no, maybe a September in the middle of a season. And then the next season he was like, right. So in the, in the middle of that season, while it was still Wimbledon, we started playing at MK Dons. So we felt there was something going to happen. Yeah. So then... We literally, in the, one July, they just come in and said, right, we're moving to MK Dons and we're, we're moving to Milton Keynes and we're naming it MK Dons. And everyone's like, wow, what's going on here? <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was tough. But again, when you look at it, 
at the time where Wimbledon was at, the club was only going to go one way. It was yeah. going to go under and he saved it. It's hard for the Wimbledon fans to yeah. accept and they've built their own club now and fair play to them. And hopefully that, you know, they, they can get themselves back where they should be. How, how did you find the commute? Because like you say, you're a South Londoner. I, I was never... No, I, I, I used to live there. I used to live up there, yeah? yeah so I used to live in Pete Winkleman's house. He used to live in the back of his house. <laughs> Good, funny guy, Pete. Lovely, <laughs> lovely guy. He used to live... He used to, he's, he's, um, his son, his daughter, his wife. They used to, so I used to live at the top. So you used to have a big, like, it's like almost like a castle. Yeah, yeah. Like a big castle. And then at the top of it, it's got like a, like an outhouse. Yeah. So I used to live up there. I used to live up there. He's called me, Jason, come down, get your dinner. I used to sit and have dinner with his family. Okay, so he looked like a, after me properly. It's like a digs then. And it was almost like, there's like, again, like that family feel. I felt like I had a family there. So, you know, and I'm still in contact with them now. I still speak to them, Bobby, now and again. I don't, I speak to Pete maybe every so often, yeah. but lovely people. Nah, it's good, man. After MK, someone told me, because obviously this is like a big ep for me. Yeah. Someone told me you done a, you had like a six month break where you, you weren't really feeling football. I was out of football. A year break it was. Oh, uh, a year then. He, he, oh, no, he, he, it was six, yeah, six months. I left there in December and Pete was fighting, fighting, fighting for me to come back and the manager at the time, you know, you don't realise as a young kid you're making some mistakes. Yeah, I made yeah. some mistakes. Like I was like, I was playing with the first team, was doing really good, and I almost felt like I was obliged to play. Yeah. But he was holding me back, which I think he was at the time. I'll be honest, I think he was holding me back. And didn't really, some things went left and right. Maybe I might have turned up late. Just like little things you make as a kid. How can you turn up late if you're living in a chair? Because I started to go, I, I was staying there. And then once I was thinking, why am I staying here? Because I'm not getting, there's no reward for this. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So I started to go back, get the train back. Just little, little stupid mistakes you make as a kid. And then it got to a point where he was like, right, we're not going to give you a contract end of the season. You can leave. So I was like, all right. So I've got six months left. Pete was like, no, 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 no. So then it come to a heat that I was going. And Pete tried to get me to go to Rushton Diamond. Tried to, he tried to do, help me a lot. So I stopped. It was six months. actually. stopped playing for six months. Up to all sorts. Just getting your, you know, I'm back in ends. Doing a whole heap of foolishness. <laughs> and to be fair, it wasn't a bill. And... When you see somebody that's your friend that they comes from the same walk of life, from yeah, they're yeah. from the street. They turn around to you and say to you, right, I'm giving up everything. I'm not being involved in the street. I'm not doing nothing. I'm going to be an agent. That's like, I'm learning from you saying, right. I'm watching your behavior and saying, I need to do what this guy's doing. And Fact. literally from that day, like he took me Barnet. We just literally been, it's my brother. No, it's my brother. Uh, you need people. I don't feel like there's enough. Like, I don't know how much you know about the new gen in London. It's just, mm. it's, the destruction is all gone. Like, get you can be street kids, yeah. but now it's dog eat dog. Everyone's no, no one's scared of no one. Yeah, everyone yeah, goes yeah. after everyone. And like when we were growing up, if you was focused on football, you the older lot would be like, nah, you're not, you're not doing what we're doing. You go and play football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You go to football, so you go to school, take so go like they'll look after you. Whereas yeah. now, I don't think that really exists anymore. No, I don't think it. I don't really know, but because I've been out of the loop for so long, but I would say that all my older friends. <laughs> That, that all my older friends, they would, they would make sure and say, no, you're going football. You're going to do your thing. Yeah. Don't do this. Don't do that. You're, yeah. you're, you're going football. And so I give my friends my credit. They always had my back there. But, you know, when you're eggs up you, <laughs> you'd be like, no, I want to go with the man. Yeah, yeah. I want to go where they're going. I want to yeah, go do yeah. what they're doing. I can still that's, do that and football. That yeah. that's, that's was kind of my mentality as growing up. It's exciting though, because mm. I grew up, Similar, like I could have done football, but I'm choosing to go out to a shubs and, yeah, and yeah. all of this. Like it's exciting, like getting chased by police. When I was at Barnet, <laughs> so we used to be at Barnet, yeah. And I'll never forget Barnet. We used to go to ministry on a Friday, yeah. Elephant go to ministry on a Friday. So we'll go to ministry on Friday, and then we'll go football in the morning Saturday. So we'll come back ministry on six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning, and go straight to straight ball. to the game. This is League Two. League Two, straight to the game, and still performing. They're still performing. Who knows that? Well, now that everyone knows, but ah, who knew but at the time? Just saying that like, you realise when you're young, when you're doing things. Actually, Karu played with me. He used to come with me. He's Maybe. from ENDS. Ashley's from ENDS. So you <laughs> see, that, that's just like, when you realise and you think to yourself, the mad things you used to do, like I couldn't even fathom now at this age, even going out late three to four days before yeah, the game. But yeah. back then when you're young, you've got full of energy, you're thinking like, yeah, this is the right thing. You're doing this, doing that. It's like, you're, it's crazy, but you, you realise the trials and tribulations you go through to get to yeah. where you want to go. You know, I, in, for me, I feel like life, you've got to make 
the mistakes. Some mm. some are detrimental, like it can ruin your life, but some you learn from. Yeah. And like, like you said, now now you can dream of going out yeah. two days before a game. But yeah. No, I think you ha- I think in any walk of life in football as well, you have to make the mistakes to learn from them. Yeah. Like there's no there's no perfect world in any walk of life. And people think that footballers live a perfect life. We don't. There's human there is mistakes. The day, there is mistakes yeah. and the higher you go, the more magnified it is. Yeah. But you need to make these mistakes in order to learn for yourself. Facts. Um, Ministry of the Spot, though. What's the other one? The other one that was in Vauxhall. It's shut down now. It's shut down. Um, shut down. But that was probably before your time. Yeah, man. but I, Ministry of the Spot, my time. time. Yeah, but I know that was the spot. Yeah. <laughs> Coliseum. 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 Way before your time. Way before your time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. But I can imagine. What did we have? We had like citizens and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Citizens. What's the other place? SC1 you... Club. And, yeah. yeah. And then th- this is before we go uptown. Yeah, before Uptown's a uptown. different game. Yeah, uptown different, different. This is just game. local. <laughs> yeah, uptown's complete. I know you know. When you go are Browns game. and all these times. <laughs> like faces is... on a Sunday. Yeah, faces on a Sunday. <laughs> but yeah, faces on a Sunday used to be good. But of course it was good. There was nothing better than Browns. Where was Browns? Browns was. Um... Ah, what's that bridge that you go over? And it's just to the right, man. I forgot the. I'm bad with places in London. It where it is. Yeah, you've been out the loop for a while. Yeah, I've been a long time. I forgot where it, where it is. You know, it's the. It is the back of... What's it, mate? Anyway, don't worry about yeah, all that. Yeah, I yeah, know yeah. you shut it down anyway. A few times, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> um, would you say Barnet? So you got an bill taking you to Barnet. Was a saving grace for you? Because if you didn't have Barnet, if you didn't have the option of Barnet, you might not... Obviously, you didn't take it serious, but you still took it. Well, you, people don't understand that. Like, that's my... The bill is like my brother. Like... We, I used to stay in his mum's house. <laughs> I used to live in his mum's house, live on the sofa. I used to leave. We used to leave his house, say, 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. He used to drive me to training. Under, was that Underhill times? This is Underhill, yeah. but this time we was training at Potter's Bar we was training. Okay, okay. And Bill used to take me training. That's the top of that. That showed his dedication that he had to me as a friend. He used to take me training. Sick, sick. So for three, four months, he used to take me training. And then once I got the contract and I started to find my feet, he was like, all right, boom. And I used to, then I used to get a train from Sellers because you, you could get a train straight from, um, actually it was um, Loughborough. Get a train, train, train straight all the way up there. So I used to get the train. But it was like, I remember Barnet. We was playing, I'll never forget, it was playing Accurate and Stanley. <laughs> and I'd done well. So, because obviously I went there a bit, with a bit of a reputation with the stuff that happened at MK Dons. <laughs> Paul Fairclough was the manager. Lovely guy again, man. Great guy. Looked after me. But at the time, you think they're being bad. Went there and he was like, look, we can offer you a contract. We can give you a contract for, what did he say to me? For £100 a week. <laughs> what? He said, I'll give you a four-week contract. Because he saw me, we played in this friendly game. <laughs> yeah. It was like, four 11s played against each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the only player that they brought back. So then he brought me back. So then after he brought me back, he said, right, went through pre-season and that stuff, four weeks. He's like, right, I can give you a contract for four weeks for £100 a week. Then he's like, done well in that, played the league games. Yeah. Done really well, kept my head down. And then he was like, right, we'll give you a contract for the season for £200 a week. And I just said to him, honestly, I said, Paul, look, I'm being honest with you. I said, I know that I've got the reputation. Yeah, yeah. Had a bit of a, I, I said, but you can't expect me to sign for £200 a week. I've done everything you've asked. Yeah. I've tried my nuts off. I've worked hard. I've played well in the games. And now you want me to sign for £200 a week. He's like, well, if you don't sign the contract, you're not going to play. So these are the trials and tribulations you don't realise are going to football. So I remember we went Accurate and Stanley all the way there and he put, me on, be- way, put yeah. me on the bench and didn't even put, put me on. So then that was a bit of a stumbling block for about yeah. a week and then he come back and then he was like, look, we'll give you £350 a week. So I signed for £350 a week for a season. Though. Not bad. No. D- How old are you? How old are you? 19. Yeah. But I don't know. At that time, you just for me, even me and the Bill agreed, it wasn't about, it wasn't necessarily about the money. Yeah, yeah. It was more about getting back in the door. But yeah, then yeah. it was like, comes a bit of a borderline principle where <laughs> you got to live come sense yeah. back then league two as a 19 year old 20 year old kid to take 350 pound a week that was just decent money yeah no cost of living back then yeah, boy. decent money yeah. what was you wearing yeah, a Mado Visu or something or a Machino ch- suit ch- suit set yeah, but back then was it a Visu it might have been a Visu well, Machi- you had a was, bit, it, yeah. was, was it Robin's jeans true religion you Patrick Robin's Cox jeans? and that nah, I'm too young for that Patrick Cox? No, nah, not Patrick Cox. That's way back. You're taking oh, way back. <laughs> That's like <laughs> Patrick Cox's school days. From Shelley's. 
Okay, no, okay. Shelly's old. Um, no, well, as long as you can dress and eat, feed yourself. Yeah, yeah. As long as you can dress and feed yourself, you're you're all right. You're just like it was. It was. It was a good again, a good learning curve, Barney. Played fo playing football with men. Yeah. You Put know. you in a shop window. Is that you say? Some freedom. Yeah. I was playing with freedom. Paul let me play. I learned the game. Learned a lot of things. So it was good. But right, let me paint the picture. I do this all the time, especially from people that have similar upbringings to myself. So you're at you've signed for Bar you're at Barnet. Mm. They're offering you 100, 100 pound, 200 pound, 350 you're on. You're from South London, Croydon. Then you get signed for a quarter of a mil to mm. Plymouth. Mm. What's your thought process when you hear my, your Jason Punchin from Croydon worth a quarter of a million pound? Do you know what? I was really excited about it. But again, when I look back at myself then, like a young kid coming from South London, you're sitting there thinking like, I'm just leaving the ends. That's what I'm thinking about, mm. leaving the man there. Like, I'm not going to be with my brothers. I'm not going to be doing this. I'm not going to be with my family. But then there comes a point when you know that you're playing football. And at the time, it was a great decision to go to Plymouth. But mm. Miles away, it, though. It, it was miles away. But in terms of, like, you went from League 2 to the Championship. The problem was, is, is when, you, when you look at the type of manager that I went to play for, he was never going to fit. Was it long ball? It was just completely different. Long ball was never going to fit. Okay. It was never going to fit. And then you, then you realise after a while when you're there, like, kind of made a mistake here. Yeah. But they're football. You take the chances, you know. How, Plymouth being so far, how did you cope? Because like you said, you're, you want to go back to ends. Juggle. Juggle massively. <laughs> Is massively. that like a four-hour trip? And, and again, you've got to think, you're up there. You're on your own. At that time, you're sitting there thinking, like, why am I staying in? I'm... I'm not maybe getting a chance. Like, all yeah. these things go through your head. Do you understand what I mean? It's, it's, you're a young kid. You're there on your own and you're, you're trying to make things work and stuff like that. And it was, it was a tough time. And lucky Stacky was there. Graham Stack was there. Bradley was there as well, actually. Bradley come, uh, Brad come the second season. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brad come the second season. But Graham Stack was there. Me and him was very close together. <laughs> He's got stories for days. Yeah, but... days, days, days. Stacky's funny, man. Funny. So it was, it was tough. It was tough. But I, I, I left there... I imagine I signed there in the, the summer and I left there, I think, in the October <laughs> or September. I went to MK Dons where Di Matteo was the manager. Okay. You see, when things aren't going well at club, because I think when talking to a few people that you hear, like your story, think didn't go well at Plymouth, didn't go well at Southampton, only in a couple of clubs. Are you telling your agent to get on the phone and get you out of there or is it just like you've got to grind think, it out? I think, again... Is the agent you have in the background is he needs experience to deal with these things? Yeah, I think back then when I was younger, I was a bit more headstrong. Well, not head. I wouldn't say headstrong. I was a bit more blow off the handle quickly. Yeah. <laughs> like if you if you're not playing, you could just blow off the handle, and you don't realize that at the time it's the wrong thing to do. And what you need to realize is sometimes at football, at clubs, sometimes you need to stand still. Yeah, because what the manager's picking now in two three two three months is not going to be what he's picking then, and it's you've got to earn yourself back into that. In environment but, yeah. and it's also going to take a strong agent to say no nah, no nah, you don't need to leave sit there sit strong or the agent understands right yeah he needs to leave see that's a second gem because I've got a friend who has come through the ranks like yourself he's he weren't playing and then he was like I want to I wanna pay up and his agent's like no like you're going to be on good money for the next X amount of years focus just we'll get your club and just play and now he's, he's gone on loan He's found his feet again. Yeah. You just need that, yeah, you that need guidance. That, yeah, you need that guidance. And, and again, and the agent only could, the agent's experience comes from his experience with the players that he's dealt with, the experience he's had in football. Yeah. That is a, 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 a good thing. And I think probably back then with, with Nabil, he was still a young learner. So probably maybe we didn't have that, guide, right, that yeah. guidance pack. When you look at him now, he's been in the game 15 years, agency, strong. So now he knows it, understands it. Yeah. Have you, have you had any experiences... Not directly with yourself, but like players, you know, with like the new generation of agents. Like, because nowadays it's a lot of like, and I rate you, know, like people that have changed their life around ex, like road men and stuff like, and even families. Mm. Like, what's your thoughts on, on that? I think now is like, I hate to say it, but is everybody wants to be an agent that can't play football. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I the, the way I see it now, and. In football, it is a special thing, and you have to be careful. Like sometimes, 
even big agents, they just want money. Yeah. That yeah. is a fact. I didn't, I didn't want to no, say that. I didn't no, want to say my that. honest opinion is I don't care if the agent wants money. Yeah. Just get me what's right for me. Take your money, feed your family. I've got no problem with that. Facts, yeah. Whereas then you also get on the flip side of it, the player. Like I never, I had Tony Finney was my agent from young guys. Yeah. Then I moved. I went to with Neil Fewens and which was Wasserman. I would speak to my agent once a month if that. I didn't need to speak to him every day. I didn't want to speak to him every day. Some players need that moddy coddling, like, <laughs> how are you? You've played good. You trained good. You've done this. You've done that. I'm not like that as a person. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I think also football's changing. A player will wake up one day and be like, I ain't spoke to my agent for two weeks. I want to change agent. And there's always an agent waiting. And then also, then you also got to look at this now, is as football clubs, if you're looking at a player, like when you get to a different, like when you get to the top, top level, and you look at that player and see, right, that player's had four or five different agents, they're going to say that player's not stable. Yeah, you might be the bad egg. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So that, that's, that's the other side of it. That, that's the third gem you've dropped now. Can I keep counting them? Um, your agent eventually gets you out of Plymouth, mm. move slightly up the road, Southampton. Now, that, when you move to Southampton, they've gone from Prem mm. to financially <laughs> in the mud. Are you looking at it as a chance to build up your career and help a club that's financially unstable or just I'm at a big club now? Do you know what? I'll be honest with you. As much as as a kid, you know Southampton's big club. I didn't realise the club I walked, that I was signing until I walked in the building. Man, and that. when I went to the games, how big of a club it is, their behaviour and all that stuff. And I'll never forget because I was still... You get that stigma in football and it carries with you, you know? <laughs> it does carry with you. When you've made those mistakes yeah, as younger, yeah. I'll never forget Nicola Cortese, brilliant man, love him as well. Looked after me through good and bad moments. Become like somebody that's like a friend can still call upon him now. First day I signed, he was like the, the secretary, Ros Wheeler, lovely lady as well. <laughs> she said to me, oh, the chairman wants to see you. So I've gone up to see you. He said, look, we know you're a talented player. We've seen you. We want, we, we're happy to have you here. Yeah. But just behave yourself. <laughs> and that sort of put it put something in my mind you know and the first six months was on absolute fire like couldn't couldn't do nothing wrong we missed out by the playoffs by one point <clears throat> so then we go to preseason. Um the third is what this is the third week in pre third week in preseason. I come out of a change room yeah and we've got these porter cabins I come out the change room, walk out the door, fall down and twist my ankle in the third week of preseason. Harji uh, wants to protect everyone. He says, right, anyone that's injured is not training. Now, I'm a player. I need to be <laughs> like a Caribbean descendant. Yeah, yeah. If you're not training correct, you, you may be carrying a little bit yeah, of weight. You're yeah. carrying this, carrying that stuff. And for three weeks, I didn't train. We come to the week <laughs> of the game for the first season. Paul says, I need you to play. Now, I'm one of these people like, if I feel like I've got the trust of the players, yeah, coach, yeah. I'm gonna, I'll, give, I'll give you everything I can. But sometimes it's the wrong thing. Play, slow start to the season, slow, slow, fans start booing me, start getting on my back, all that sort of stuff. So I went through all that there. It was like, all of that stuff. <clears throat> Cards leaves, Atkins come in. I go in Millwall on loan yeah, yeah. to play some games, do really well. I think I scored five, get five, five goals in eight games there. <laughs> Left there, come back. And I'm like, to the owner, I said to him, no, I want to leave. I said, like, your manager told me when I went to Milwaukee, I can go there with a loan to view to permanent. Yeah. Now you want me back because I played some games. I want to leave. So I made, I kind of made up raw. <coughs> I think they could have spoke to me about it in a, maybe in a better way and I could have dealt yeah. with it in a better way. But I was just upset that you said I could, in my mind, you told me I could leave. Yeah, yeah. And because I've gone and played good, now you want me back. <laughs> so then they was like, all right, so they put me with the under 23s. This is when I was training with Luke Shaw. So Luke yeah, Shaw, okay. Walt Krause, and when and I trained... Fox. Now, Ox was with the first team there. Okay, okay. So Luke Shaw and Ward Prowse, I trained with them. Prowse was Callum Chambers. Prowse was very oh, yeah. good. Jack Stevens. Prowse was very good technically. Jack Stevens, mm -hmm. all of them technically. But Luke Shaw, it was like playing with a man. <laughs> I'm strong with the ball. Yeah. And you go against him at training. I'm like, what is that? Yeah, I, heard, I heard he was a judge. <clears throat> very good. So then I end up going to Blackpool and Lone. Do really well. Do really well. Blackpool, come back. Same thing again in the summer. Saying they don't want. So then they get to the halfway point, Southampton, where they're in the, the championship trying to fight for the title. And it's weird. Something, I was watching a Southampton game. I, was, I think it's Southampton versus Leicester. 
and I had Twitter. Well, recently, yeah? No, I was at QPR. Okay, yeah. I was at South, Southampton. There was in the championship playing Leicester. And I was watching, I had Twitter. I remember I was sitting on the bus with QPR. <laughs> so I was actually sitting on the bus with the QPR yeah, team yeah. coming back from a game. <laughs> and then the Southampton fans talking about it, and then they started at me. Where's Jason Punching? And then I said something about Ox the chairman. Duh, 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 duh. <laughs> no way. So it's, yeah, so, it's, so it's, anyway, it's all come out. Three days later, I'll get a phone call and they're like, right, you need to come to the club to see us. That Your loan's finishing at QPR. Yeah. They need to come and see us. Go there, sit down and meet him. And Nicola Cortez and talk to him and he's like, Jason, look, what you done was disrespect. I said, Nicola, I told him directly, I said, I'll never disrespect the players because they're my friends. So then we had that conversation and he was like, look, we want you back. So I went back there for six months before they got promoted. And it probably being away from there and going back there and being around where they was at that time, I almost felt like I grew up 10 years in age, in experience, in the way that I yeah. think, how I am, how I behave. And it was brilliant. Did you apologize? Yeah, I apologize for what, for what I said on the Twitter, which was, which was the correct thing to do. But I think Southampton, it taught me so much as a player and as a person. I yeah. learned so much there massively in terms of professionalism, even just like the way you carry yourself, being at a big club, the pressure of being at a big club, so many, so many different things and met so many lovely people and played with so many good, good, good players. Well, how, how, how good was Oxley Chamberlain? Like, did you know he was going destined oh, yeah, to be a star? Chabo tra trained with us when he was 16, when Pardew was the manager, the year before he come on the scene. And he was a little, I'm not lying to you, when he first came to the first team, I'm not that tall, but he was at my shoulder and he had this little afro. Yeah. He trained with us and was training one time and it was like, it was almost like Pikachu and Pokemon because he was like, <laughs> and I was like, this kid's going to be something. He weren't strong, <clears throat> took his time to get a bit physical and then he just literally kicked on. It's just, don't you find it mad that you see like a young boy like that be so good at football? Like, how can you be so good at football? Like, you look at yourself and it's like, was I that good where I can go around players like that in the, in the champ? Yeah, just, like Chamber was brilliant as well because me and Chamber as well, when we was there, I used to, I was, I, I loved, liked younger players when yeah. they come through because I like players that show that they've, they, they come in the first team and try and show something. Say, right, I'm here. I'm putting myself about. And we used to spend a lot of time after training. We used to play pinging balls into the goals. And he was just a kid that he had this attitude like, I'm going to show myself. Luke Shaw was a bit like that as well. He was, he was, a, he was a bit timid when it came to the, his first few games at, yeah. at the start, but he was like, he was like that, put himself about that. Wolf, I'd say he had that when, I, when, I, when, I, when he come back to Palace. Obviously, he'd played first team. That's something yeah. different. Yannick was like that because he was with me at Plymouth. Okay. Just like you like players that come in a session and say, right, I'm here. <laughs> However, they're going to go about it. Yeah. So that's, yeah, it was good. That's good. Like, it's the confidence that like, I just want to show how good I am at football. Um, you've had a few loans. You've mentioned some. How long does it take you to settle at a club? Like, you can even include now, like, what are the things, what are the steps you take? I think is, is when you go to a football club, the first thing you need to understand is you're brought there to play football. So you need to stamp your authority on the pitch <laughs> in the training session. Yeah. That's the first thing you need to do. Yeah. Then the other stuff sort of comes, the people around the place, the players around the place, people that work there, that comes with your mannerism, your behavior, how you deal with people, how people see you treat them. All of that takes time and people see how you are. I just think is my first thing is always thinking about trying to show myself as a football player. Okay, and if that takes long, obviously we know you're a good footballer, but if that takes longer mm -hmm. than needed, or let's say you don't like the climate, like say for instance where we are now, it yeah. was too hot for you, what else would you do? I think is it was actually his very, it was <laughs> very hot when it takes time to get used to. But I think is again you got to look at the reality is what's your purpose at that club? If you come here to win something, if you come here. Oh, people always say it's about winning but yeah. you know not in a bad way if you go to certain clubs you're maybe trying to stay in the Premier League or you're trying to stay in the Bundesliga or, or trying to win a cup or something is what is your purpose and always say to yourself that there's going to be good times and bad times in football football is always up here and always yeah. down here there's never really in like no in middle between. ground yeah, there's yeah. no middle ground but you've always got to look at yourself and fundamentally saying to myself am I giving myself the best opportunity to be the best Jason Punch in day in day out and that's the most important thing that's the fifth gem. I'm teeing you up here. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the promotion parties because I know you're a party man. Yeah? Southampton promotion party. What 
let's do where and did you organize it did you say oh we've got here i've got the table sorted <laughs> no nah, back then within southampton <clears throat> i wouldn't say i was a senior player but i was well respected okay, just yeah. good good within the dressing but i wasn't the leader that was going to organize it was kelvin but i never forget like the celebrations afterwards you leave the stadium and southampton's a big club like yeah. the fans like the streets are covered with people <laughs> You're trying to go places, go to the pub and go places. And it was more just like <clears throat> sort of a thing that was off the cuff yeah. in Southampton. And they, I don't like to say different, but it was, it's different being in Southampton to being in Crystal Palace when you're in London. There's that catch of going to London. So just on your win, doorstep. The yeah, comes just on your winning doorstep. three points to say I'm going to the West End is completely different to say, right, we've won in Southampton and say we're going out in the local Southampton. Okay. It's completely different. Like London... You go out in London, nobody's going to be... They're not bothered about Crystal Palace. True, yeah. Uh, honest opinion. They now might, they are. Now they are. Yeah, now they are. But yeah. they might see one or two of the, st the star players and be like, oh, there's example now, Elise or there's Zaha. Yeah, yeah. They're not really bothered. Like, whereas if you go to Southampton <laughs> and there's the Southampton players, you walk in somewhere and everybody's looking at you like this. <laughs> you know, it's completely different. <laughs> um... You see, what, like, like, like I said in the intro, you played League One, League Two, Champ Prem, how do you adapt? Because obviously it's, it's, it gets tougher as you go up and then Prem is the pinnacle. How do you adapt your game to be ready to play untold amount of games? And well, I, want, I don't want to say this in the wrong way, but when I first went to the Premier League, you don't realise it. You get, when I went, you get more time on the ball than you did in the Championship. But that's when I've been, I was coached that when you've got time on the ball is when you're most dangerous because you've got to make that right, right part. Yeah. So when you go to the, the Premier League, is I'll never forget, I think I made my debut against Leighton Baines. So when I had the ball, it was fine, <laughs> right? But it's him and Pina, probably two, even through all the years I played in the Premier League, probably the two best combination of like left back and left winger. Yeah, yeah. Just like you, you watch the ball and the ball and the ball goes elsewhere. And if you look at the ball and you turn your head, they're gone. Yeah, yeah. When you had the ball, it's fine. Make the wrong pass or make the wrong decision, you get punished. Everyone and says when you ain't got the ball, you need to be switched on to defend. Yeah. And that's, that was the difference. The Premier League, it was more, it was normal, yeah. high level, punish you for any mistake. You scored in that game, didn't you? Yeah, scored <laughs> in my debut against, Black, against Everton. It was, yeah, yeah. Go on. Crazy it, game. Is that the pinnacle feeling, like scoring in the Prem on your debut? Of your course, day? because I, I think I made my debut before that, I think, against West Ham. It's against West Ham. Come on, second half. And you you're, I was caught in the moment. <laughs> think you got more time. Think you're trying to do this, and you're like like this. And I was like, now Nigeria really Coco's playing against him. And then the, playing an Everton game after I played that, you've gone through that experience, sort of calmed me down. But then when you realize and you leave the game, and you realize, oh no, no, you just scored in the Premier League. Like it's a big thing. Yeah, it is, it is. As a player, you feel like I've done it early on. Yeah, is that is that the. I made it moment, or did that come earlier in your career? No, I think that's the, there's the, the, that's the first step. But is that, is that all you're thinking? No, I'm not thinking. You're I saying that as it. a mature that's, that's, Yeah, I'm saying that's, yeah, at the time, I'm not thinking I made it. I'm thinking that's the first step because I'm sitting there thinking as a player, I'm on loan at Blackpool here. I'm playing in the Premier League yeah. from Southampton. <laughs> that's crazy. As I it need is. to do really well for one or two reasons that Blackpool stays in the Premier League and I sign here yeah. or I go to another Premier okay. League. That's how, that's how I was thinking at the time. That's a good way of doing it, though, because it's your ticket to the Prem. Yeah. You don't know what happen, what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. And that's, that, that was my way of thinking. When they got relegated, did that affect you? Did that, did, uh, like... Yeah, because I was only there six months. But then again, like, after, like, just an example, when I first went to Blackpool in the training sessions, the players was complaining that I weren't passing the ball here. <laughs> I weren't doing this. I remember Charlie Adam, David Vaughan, <laughs> weren't playing the ball here, weren't doing this, weren't doing that. Seven, eight games later... They kept on saying, give him the ball, give him the ball, give him the ball. To you? Yeah. Because it's, it's just football. It happens. <laughs> like people complain. You, some players complain. Some players don't. They don't realise it. But first six weeks, seven weeks, complaining, complaining. Saying little comments. You know you can hear them. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm resilient. I was like, all right, sweet, I'll show you. So then after a while, there's like, right, give him the ball. Let him do it. So quick, give him the ball, give him the ball, <laughs> give him the ball, give him the ball. So you, you, football changes. And then you end up going back to Southampton. Mm -hmm. Are you now playing? Because no, actually, before I went to Southampton, I went to QPR on loan. Again, another loan? Yeah. You love a loan, I've boy. probably just, I think, not because the QPR loan didn't work out, I think that I could have resolved me and Southampton in a better way in that summer to be like, right, you know what, let's bygones be bygones. Yeah. Come here, 
get your nut down, see how you get on your preseason and go from there. But I was just headstrong, like I just want out of this place because of the the little things that happened. And then they obviously trained with the, the youth team for six weeks with preseason. It weren't good. And I went to QPR. I'll never forget it. Warnock's a very <laughs> like fair play to him. He's had a great career. He's done really well, Warnock. Um, but he um he's a very superstitious person. Put me on okay. in the game. <laughs> and I'll never forget it. Paddy Kenny's threw me the ball. He's, 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 Newcastle, pardon you, Newcastle. Paddy Kenny's threw me the ball. And he's threw me the ball in the halfway end. You know, QPR's tight. Yeah, yeah. Gone to control the ball is 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 Premier League. There's not the grass is long. He's threw me the ball. I've had a touch. The players nicked it off me. They've gone on a counter attack. They didn't score. And that's all that stuck in his head. So he was like, Keith Cole come to me after that. Don't you ever do that again. The gaffer never put you on. And I never saw the pitch again. <laughs> I was literally just from that. I never saw the pitch again. That's mad. Yeah, man. Right. Speaking of Warnock, why did he say them things about you that made you tweet? To, when you look at it, it really, it was, it was, it's, it's quite wild. Though. Yeah, he's like, He's not a calm player. He's not this, not to do this and do that. He said all those things. Is some people are just in interviews talking, and they don't realize what they're doing. And yeah. In all fairness, like really, in football, it's all about rapport. So, how did that player play for me when he was here? Played twenty five minutes for Woolock. <laughs> so he's not really probably got nothing good to remember. Yeah, yeah. So he's probably just thinking, well, I'm just going to say what I got to say. So he had said what he said, and I reacted in the way I reacted. But it was funny because football changes. <laughs> he then comes to my club. <laughs> so I'm at Crystal Palace. And you're a man there at this time. So that time is, I'm at home. It's my club. I'm there. <laughs> I'm like, it's my home. Like, do you know what I mean? You come to my club now and you're now becoming to be, coming to be the manager. I don't know if Steve Parrish was like, because Steve Parrish was brilliant. Lovely guy as well. Um, family. Um, Walnut calls me in the office first day. Like, what's up? I've literally walked in. I was like, what do you want? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I just want bygones to be bygones. I'm like, look, let's be honest. It's not really going to be bygones. Yeah, bygones. Yeah. You're still going to remember it. I'm still going to remember it. Yeah. You've signed it. I'm here. I'm playing it. You do your job. I do my job. Finish. Wow. And, and then, funny enough, lo and behold, you're playing the games. He's, I didn't actually know this <clears throat> from the board members at the time. But I knew through agents, through the periphery, but I just let it be because in football, this is where I grew up at Palace. I was happy there. Your home, whatever, your stuff. And you, you don't take this in the wrong way. I knew Warnock's time was coming to an yeah, end because yeah. of where the club was at. So I was like, I just bided my time. I was playing a game here. We're not playing again. I was like, do you know what? I'll be here longer than him. So I just sort of <laughs> said to myself, keep my head down. But I knew in the journey he wanted to try and get me out. I was serious. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? That's you maturing. Yeah, 100%. Listen to your story. Barnet, Jason, would have probably said something about not playing. Oh, now 100%. you're just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, look, he's, sometimes in football, he's like, at that time, I was like, I ain't going to give the satisfaction to go and speak to Warnock and say to him why well, I'm not playing. I know, and he knows why he's not playing me. So let's leave it there. Yeah. Nothing in football and in life, there's always going to be time passes. Some people have their time. Some people's time is over. And that's just how it goes. How did the Palace, Palace move come about? Because that's going back home. Holloway again. It was funny because okay. Holloway was admit Blackpool. Okay, and he went to yeah, Palace, yeah, yeah. And then it, <coughs> Palace move was supposed to happen for years under different managers, <laughs> different times, so many different times, and it didn't. And then I was at Southampton and Pochettino was there. And again, you know football. Yeah. And don't forget, we were staying in a because we used to do double sessions. We were staying in a, a hotel around the corner from the, the training ground. And Kelvin Davis, again, lovely guy, good guy. He wasn't a lovely guy, bro. No, Kelvin, <laughs> just like people I'm t- yeah, yeah, yeah. you get on with. And he, he used to, again, a gu- guidance. Yeah, to see okay, the okay. Guide okay. And I'll never forget the day when my agent was like, Palace really want you, really want you. I was like, I'm not sure if I want to go, you know, because at the oh, time, really? even though with Potch, I wasn't, it didn't feel like I was going to start the season. I felt like I'd, Grown up so much as a player was going to learn a lot more. Yeah. Do you understand know I me? Mean? Yeah, yeah. And Kel- Kelvin was like, he was like, Kelvin was like, don't go. I was like, I was like, Kelvin, I don't, not hundred percent. I want to go because it's 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 my it is my home. I said, but when a club tells you that this club's tell- coming for you, it's, I'm not forcing it. Yeah, they've the clubs come to me and said to me like Crystal Palace one. So that tell that's that's kind of the writing on the wall for you anyway. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you can sense, stick yeah. it out and I can say to myself, it's going to stick this out and you'd be like, oh, I can go to Palace. I know I'm going to play a good majority of the games. Yeah. And I'm at home. It's my team. It's like, it's my home team. I had this kit team I followed from a kid. <laughs> what was it like stepping out there in the kit? Like, because like you say, your man lived on the road. That's... <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you don't, you don't realise it because Palace is like, you know that before that I signed at Palace, yeah. I never played there in a professional game. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. like, even even as an away team. Oh, serious? Even as a away team. Never That's played that professional game. Never. Wimbledon um, or against Crystal Palace. Were you nervous? No, when the, home played, when we, the Holmesdale stands rocking. We played, remember, is all the times I go and watch Palace, is it not in the bad way, it was yeah. in the championship. So okay, I never yeah. Felt oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, okay. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? And then we played Sunday at home and I was like, love this. And then again, it was one of them things is like, I almost feel like he's. I must be a player that people, like, that the fans grow to love. Yeah. Started the first game. Front. We played Stoke away first game. We played Sunderland at home, home debut. Brilliant. Loved it. And then Holloway, again, it was like, and again, not, don't take this in the wrong way. We didn't have Premier League players then. That was good enough yeah. for Premier League. That yeah. was a fact. We didn't. So you're struggling. We were struggling. Yeah. Struggle for some games. The, the fans, um, the fans, um, Again, was on my back. On me, on me. I'll never forget. We played a game at home. But remember, Crystal Palace is my home, so I know everyone. My dad knows everyone. My yeah. mom knows everyone. Everyone knows me. I know all these people. And there's a guy in a box, and he's like, we're doing running, and he shouted down. He's like, punch me well. Effing, whatever. Yeah, yeah. What? I walked up there, gone up there to the box. Where are you? What, what, what would you say? Guys walked off, whatever. Well, you're in the box. You're going, you're going yeah, to the there. I went up. Because ah, ah. I'm angry at the time. Um, I'm angry at the time. We, I think we played Fulham at home. It was a game. Remember Kasami scored that volley? Yes, 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 yes. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that yeah, yeah. And then so I was like, all right. So then they was on my back for a bit, the Palace fans. Then they never played Norwich away. I think it might have been Pulis. Norwich away, your sh- whatever. And then Pulis come in and I was like flipping up. I was like, you, when you look at, Again, looking at somebody from a glass window, you're yeah. sitting there thinking, I ain't going to play under this guy the way he plays. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Again, absolutely brilliant. I know, I hate to say, it was brilliant in terms of keeping the players together. Probably me trying to be a coach, I learned so much from him because the players that weren't playing, yeah, yeah. he would speak to them more than the players that was playing. But you knew, no matter what, there were still 13, 14 players going to play. That's mad. I guess Palace suits... That type of style of football. It's a very small, enclosed pitch. Mm. So, yeah. Um, you just mentioned you want, you're trying to be a coach. Mm. Let me ask you a question, yeah? Mm. What makes a good manager? Someone who's played the game or management team? Someone who's played the game or someone who hasn't played the game? No, I don't think... Obviously, as a player, you're going to have a bit... They would say generally... Excuse me. <coughs> you're going to say generally they have a bit more knowledge. Yeah. But I think the most important thing for me that I thought as a coach is a, a coach understanding the psychology of the players. When is the right moment to go mad at the players? When is the right moment to relax? And although that side of it, because remember, you've got to keep 25 people happy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and naturally in football, if you keep, if there's 25, if you keep 17, 18 in a certain way, the other people fall into land, they follow suit. Yeah, okay. Um, As a player, how do you cope with not starting like big games? Because you know your worth. And when you're not, like, for FA Cup final, for instance, you're not starting, but you come on a score. How do you cope with one not starting? Because when do you know you're not going to start, like, the day before? It's okay? weird that, so, like, normally coaches will probably tell you the day before or whatever. Some coaches don't speak to you. Hard, you actually told me on the first day. You told me you're not going to play. Now, bearing in mind, that like, obviously, Palace is your club, and don't get me wrong, at that time, That season, I didn't have one of my best seasons at Palace okay. in terms of the return of goals and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I got injured, come back. And then when I come back, then I started to get goals and shift started to, for some reason, I don't know why. I don't know if it's there. You, you don't know. And probably the last 10 games of the season, I was, or se- say seven to 10 games of the season, I was probably back to my normal punch self. So when he tells me I'm not playing, I'm fuming, 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 because I'm sitting there thinking, if this game was 10 weeks earlier, I would not have said nothing. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I knew that I weren't at the level. Yeah. But I knew he was picking that team based on loyalty to some players that he liked. I won't go into that detail. 
And that's what annoyed me. And all the players knew it. Okay. So then I never forget he told me, and I used to sit in Danny the Kitman's room, me and Danny's another, I know I said another good person, me and him would get on really. No, cool. I met Danny, he, yeah. he sorted me out. A so I sat in his room and I just sat in literally <coughs> I think Pards told me at nine o'clock. I sat in his room from nine o'clock until we went out to train at ten thirty. Had my shoes on, went out, train, train like normal. And then Balassian, that's coming up to me. Wolf's coming up to me. The boys are coming up to me. And remember, like, but though I was good, I was good with everyone in the dressing yeah, room. I was yeah. like a, a leader in that dressing room. But I always looked at Wolf and Yannick. They was like my little brothers. Yeah. They know that. And when I saw their faces when they realized I weren't playing, I was like, if I behave in the wrong way, I'm gonna, not only going to mess them up, but I'm going to mess the team up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I suffered it. And I'm never forget Damo is Damo, me and Damon Delaney's close as well. Damo was like, brother, I don't know how you do all that. I, said, <laughs> I, would, I, I wouldn't have been behaving the way you are. Like me and Damo was close like yeah. that. I was like, Damo, you know what, mate? I'm fuming, but what can I do? Yeah. Like, he's I'm fuming. So then we go to the game. And I'll never forget the day of the game, Woody, which is Pardew's close mate. And I still get with Pardew now. Yeah, yeah. Been fantastic. But I understood it. Afterwards, as you get older, why you done it? Okay. Because some people can, some people, when you disappoint them, they come back fire and fight. <laughs> so he knew I was that person. Okay, yeah, yeah, He yeah. knew that I'm going to be like, uh, like angry, wanting to go and show myself, wanting to go and prove myself. Whereas if he'd done it to somebody else, they might have been soaking, never been able to recover. Yeah. i never forget, first off, I'm fuming. <laughs> My mum's fuming. They've I've got like, that, yeah. like, even Christine, like, I've got, I think I'm about, about 85 tickets. You're only supposed to have 40 <laughs> tickets. Like, You're at 85? Yeah, like Crystal Palace. Remember, every home game, I need 20, 25 tickets. It's like my home. Like people forget yeah. that's like my home. Like all, there's always somebody popping up for tickets. And I was never, I was a good person that looked after people, gave people tickets when I got them. Like yeah. I never really charged people for tickets, all that stuff. I looked after my people. Yeah. And I forget, I never forget, um, I went to see my mum before the game in the stadium. So I was training, or warming up. I never forget, I kept on wanting to, for some reason, go toilet, go toilet. I don't know if I was nervous, go toilet. <laughs> And they, I've gone to the toilet, I think 65 minutes, and they're coming looking for me, like, quick, 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 you need to go on. The gaffer's getting you, you need to go on. So then gaffer's come to me and he's like, right, go and show all that aggression on the pitch. Sick, sick. And then you don't actually, I, I, like, you don't realize how surreal the moment is in there. You can't hear nothing. Serious, you like that, yeah? You hear nothing. I can just about, I know we're, where we're sitting now, I can just about hear someone 15 yards away from me. <laughs> I heard St. James's Parks like that as well in Newcastle. When it's rocking. Yeah, listen, I've been in games like Stephen Gerrard's last game. They was constantly singing, singing, singing. Newcastle can be like that. Yeah. But it's a different, like Newcastle, remember, when you're playing the game, it's like the, the fans are sucking the ball into the goal. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. The yeah. Same as like when you, like Gerrard, that's what okay. kind of Anfield's like. But that atmosphere was completely different. You cannot hear nothing. Wow. Like, literally, <laughs> if, uh, if you get in the ball, I can, if you ain't looking, you can't, I can't hear. 15 yards away from when somebody saying something to me. Like Scott Dan's a very loud character. Yeah. <clears throat> me and Scott Dan, very loud character, vo vocal, like me, vocal. And I was playing in the middle and something happened. It was like, didn't you hear me call? I said, mate, I can't hear you. <laughs> like, I can't hear you. That's crazy. It's crazy. So just talent just kicks, like tactics and talent just kick in because... Not even the talent, the tactics is just a moment. Like when I look at that game, I, I do look back at it and I think, I wish as another part added to my game a little bit later on. I was intelligent player, but that <clears throat> say a little bit more nasty streak. Like Rooney, I remember in the middle of the party, he ran past me, he had that, <laughs> Papa Soiree, and then somebody else and chipped it. And um, was it Lingard that scored? Yeah, yeah. Lingard. yeah. And I was just sitting there and think, about if, I, if I could rewind that now, I would have kicked him <laughs> two foot in the air like before that. Do you know what I mean? You look back at it and you think, take the foul for the team, kind yeah, of you thing. Take yeah. the foul, take the yellow card, because he really done it in the game. He was <clears throat> on a yellow card. We went on a counter attack, and I think he kicked me or Balassi, just bam. And I stayed down trying to get him sent off, and Rooney's come to me like, get up, punch, get up, get up. <laughs> and I was like, ref, it's a yellow card. Yeah. But the ref didn't give him a yellow card. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there is them, them now. So when you look at it <clears throat> from a flip side, Rooney really won Man United the game because of his talent and his ability. Yeah. He just wanted that hunger to win it. I was scoring. Mumsy's the 85 people come to watch you. Although it, the result didn't go your way, mm. 
you've ticked a box for Londoners scoring at Wembley. Yeah, it's a bittersweet moment. It's something, it's something someone <clears throat> can never take away from you. But as a football person, I always look at you. You're the guy that scored in the FA Cup final and you lost. That's yeah. my point of view. Yeah, yeah. Like for your family, your friends that. and all that stuff, they always say, oh, my son scored or your, your, your friend scored the FA Cup final, the Palace fans, they'll always remember that. But it's, it, is a, it is a bit of a sweet moment. It's probably like a, probably a, a would, would have been a good story to talk with the one the game. It would have been know. epic. But. You might have got the key to the city, boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, is your shirt hanging up from the game? Yeah, I still got my shirt. See, you're proud yeah, of that sure. moment, man. Bit of sweet, you're right, but you can't ignore that. Like scoring, not everyone can score at Wembley. Not everyone can win things. Like you say, like you want to yeah. add mm. winning things or playing at highest level. Like you still got another level to go, but mm. you got to own it, man. Show your son, look. Yeah, no, definitely. My kids will, my kids will remember it. They, they, they remember it. My mum will always remember it. My nan. Like it's, it was a special moment for, for my family, but I just, you, you look back and there's there's so many things that you football's one of the things that you wish you could change yeah and yeah. I always look at myself and I wish I could change that moment in the middle of the park when Rooney just he just took a touch there <laughs> and I said kick him and I didn't because I because you know he's like naturally I see Mele and I think yeah. he's a big lump and I can't even remember Mele might have been on a yellow card and might not have got sent off okay. and because this is where again like football I know it's a bit off topic but I loved playing with Mille as a midfielder was because it always knew as a midfielder, I had that freedom to go and express myself because I had a wall behind yeah. me. Like a modern day, like a Casemiro. Yeah. You know, like you're going to go the, and this guy behind you is going to sleep. And he's time. got the nastiness as well. Yeah. 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 That's mad. That's mad. But anyway, that happens. It's, it is what it is. You become Palace captain. <laughs> Yeah. Basically, the mayor of Crystal Palace now. <laughs> <laughs> and again, like that's that's your home. Now yeah. you've got like now you're like basically second, third in command of the club. Mm. Were you ready for that? Yeah, I was ready. I was always like probably at, I probably set Palace is coming from Southampton when it's a big club. The, the infrastructure, the way the clubs run, the, all different things. You're coming from a level above, and I kind of <clears throat> Damo again was a good help. Mele. After the first six months, I kind of sort of found that 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 mold as like being a leader, and I didn't yeah. really need the armband to be a leader. Okay, yeah, yeah. Do you understand? What I mean, it was kind of like like it was weird because Sam came in and he was brilliant. Sam, like brilliant Sam, he was just like he treated everyone the same, and I'll never forget. Mamadou Saku played at Paris Saint Germain, youngest PSG captain, nineteen he was, and Mamadou was a brilliant footballer. I'll never forget, we were doing this training session. And Mama's a good footballer, so he's yeah. gonna play. He's not just gonna kick the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Mama's not gonna do that. Yeah. Like it doesn't make no difference. He is not gonna do that. That's just not his way. And Mama's gave the ball to short the ball short to somebody in midfield. They've lost it. Sam's come in, going, What the F are you doing? I told you don't play there. <clears throat> and I'm sitting there thinking, I was just gonna go, because Mama's just signed <laughs> like gave him a lot of money, took it from Liverpool. Yeah. And I was just gonna go. But it gained the respect to the players because what Sam showed you was. I'm going to talk to everyone the same. Yeah. And he spoke to him, Mama yeah. like it. He spoke to Yoan at the time, me like it. He spoke to Wolf like it. He treated everybody the same. <clears throat> and that's where he was brilliant. But captains, like Sam was, I've had some managers, they'll make a big thing of it about being a captain and be like, come in my office, all right, you're going to be captain today. You're going to be this, this, yeah. this. Literally, I was eating breakfast on the morning, on a pre match, but the morning before the game, he come in and this typified Sam, come in, slap me on the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> he said, morning, son. I said, yeah, morning, Gaffer. He said, you'll be captain today. And he walked off. That was him. No, like, no, explanation. Like, no, like, trying to muddy cuddle. <laughs> you were trying to make you feel like, are oh, you up for it? Or oh, you're this, you're that. Nothing. Just like, bam, do all of it. That's why he was good. That's bad. That is bad. And I guess it worked, didn't it? Because you went on, you took the, you took the role. Although you was doing it already, mm. kind of took the role and just flourished, didn't it? Yeah, he was, he, Sam wanted men. So if he wasn't, if you couldn't just go and say, right, I'm going to do my job the best I can. I don't need the manager to try and guide me or to try and moddy coddle me and try and butter me up, then you would struggle. Yeah. But if you were just going to go to the pitch, try and make my job the best I can to be a man, then it's brilliant. Okay, I'm going to touch on this one quickly. Played on the Roy Hodgson. Yeah. Obviously, he's been in the game for years. Yeah, yeah. When you hear that name being associated with your club, does that bring excitement or 
like, because you've played under so many managers, is it like, oh, here we go again, or, okay, maybe someone who can come steady the ship? Well, I thought, I, for me personally, I thought it was going to be a good thing for me personally, and, well, for the club, first of all, and for me personally, but it didn't turn out that way. <laughs> like, Roy's got his way that he works, and it does <coughs> gel the team in his identity and the way that he works, and yeah. it, it is good, and it works in his model and his way. Um... And I think for Crystal Palace at that time, the budget they gave him, I think he's done a, done a fantastic job. Fair, fair. And like I said, you paid for a few managers. What's the strangest thing? You look back at it, you look back at it now and think, well, what was he doing? As a manager has done in your career. I know it's weird and I don't like to keep talking that about Warnock, but he was, I know we had our differences, but I still respect him as yeah, a manager. Yeah, he's done yeah. fantastic in the, for the, what he's done for football, the teams he's done, the promotions he's had, fantastic. But I'll never forget it. I remember when I was in the stitches, two things. We was training the Friday before a game. And you know you play small-sided game. <laughs> we play a small-sided game. And then he blew the whistle and he's like, right, you can score in any goal. <laughs> and anyone who's a footballer understands, if you're playing a small-sided game, say you can score in any goal. I remember me and JT, me and Joe Thomas was close at Palace as well. Me, JT, Barry Bannon was there. And I just looked at JT and I was like, this guy for real. <laughs> What's he talking about? So me and JT just started laughing. So Baz, people started just kicking the balls into the goal. So if you scored in one goal, you could just go and score in the other goal. It didn't, didn't it make didn't, no yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. It was like, like a he was trying to be funny. Yeah. And it was like the most stupidest thing ever to do the day before the game. So then that was one of them. And then the other one was his, he was playing Southampton at home. I'll never forget this. And this is when I said, ah, this is just comical. You're playing Southampton, it's a Premier League game. Now, bearing in mind, you work on your shape and yeah, things. Yeah. You do your stuff, you do whatever. Now, Southampton, obviously, when they've come and gave their lineup, you could kind of work out maybe what formation they're yeah, going to play. Yeah. So we figured out that when we do it, they're going to play a 3-4-3. Three, three. This, is, this is 10 minutes before you're going out for a Premier League game. Bro. <laughs> Sorry. He comes in and decides we're going to change the shape and play 3-4-3. Three, three. To match them. To match them. Even though you've worked on... Never worked on nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget Steve Parrish was there me and Damon we walked out and because Palace's dressing room back then used to have a lot of when you walk in the manager's office used to be sort of on the right oh yeah I've been in there though. I've got yeah, showing. So I've so got showing. in there yeah, so, 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 so you've been in there and Steve normally comes and says hello to the boys in yeah. and I just walked out the dressing room just looked at him <laughs> cut my eye Damo did and I just carried on walking and then we went out to the game and we got, I think we lost 3 0, we got bad. 3 0 or 4 0, we got bad. And I just thought, you, how can you prepare for, a, pre prepare for a Premier League game in that way? That, that is, yeah, you it's can't explain that. You can't explain that. In his head, he's probably thinking, yeah, I've done that in. It was com you can't, you, <laughs> players, are, to, to, for me, when you change shape and change formation, you have to have very, very intelligent players. Very, very, yeah, very intelligent yeah. players. Well, you've you got to, like, to at least know they're got, going to work on the backup. You've got to work on it. Yeah. Players have got to know it, or you've got to have top, top, top intelligent players. I think only a few teams can do that. City, maybe Arsenal now, as they're starting to show their maturity. But yeah, it's not. It's, just, it's not easy. Yeah. It's difficult. Okay. With Roy there, your time at Palace comes to an end. But it wasn't like, Correct me if I'm wrong. It wasn't like the club set it up for you. Like you're the you're the club captain. You're from the area. We're gonna you're gonna go out with like some grace. Wasn't it like Danny that told you? Yeah, it weren't, it weren't, I wasn't going out of grace. Um, so what happened is, is bits to the January and Andy Hughes used to be a coach at Palace and he was at Huddersfield at the time, and they said they needed some experience. And I was like, Hughesy, I'll definitely come. But I just, yeah. I just wanted to play football. And I knew, like. From after Roy being there for a week and he said, look, you're not going to play no more. You're not going to be number one pick. I was like, there's a bit more to this, you know? And he, he said to me at the time, Roy was like, not that I've got any hidden agendas. When somebody says that to you, it's like somebody saying, I'm not a liar. You yeah. Know you are. Yeah. Yeah. So do you know what I mean? So then I got injured as well. Then the second season come back, he made Luke a captain, didn't say nothing to me. So I was like, well, I can see how this is going. So we get to the January and, and Andy Hughes wants... David Wagner wants me and I sort of force it through and I said to Steve listen I need to go and I, we played our own one game and Roy was trying to be like nah I need you I was like Roy so stop being silly <laughs> like, been here 18 months do you know what I mean I ain't played again mm. like that's the reality like there's no point of trying to beat around the bud we've got to be adult 
And Steve was like, Steve avoided me from after the game. I was like, Steve, I want to go. Like, I want to go. I want to go and play football. Like, no matter what I do here, it's not going to change. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I wouldn't have minded. If I knew that maybe some games here, Roy's going to put you here, going to put you there, you might say to yourself, do you know what? You like your team, relax and chill. But it wasn't even like that. So I was like, I'm basically, I felt like I was sitting there picking up a wage for nothing, basically. That's how I felt. No purpose. No purpose. Yeah. So I go to Huddersfield on loan. Contracts went out at the end of the season. Nobody says nothing to me. Nothing. Steve didn't. And that's the one I uh, love Steve to pieces. Probably the one gripe when you feel like you've got a family there that somebody could just be... It's a hard conversation because yeah. you know you're close to somebody, but yeah. it's the honest conversation. It's the right... You respect thing. him a bit more. So, yeah, respect him. I wouldn't say I don't respect him any less, but yeah. it's the one gripe I, I have as, as in terms of that the club at that time that nobody had the the nous to have the difficult conversation because I would have the difficult conversation whether it was right or wrong with them. That's how I, I felt. Yeah, that's crazy. And it was Danny that rang me. He was like, oh, they want to say Phil. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, wow. I was like, okay. But I love Danny. I respected him, you know? So, and Danny could, he, because he knew me so well, he could talk some sense into me if I was angry or whatever, you know? And I was like, Danny, I don't really want to do it because nobody's not said that to me. I said, you're the player liaison. You're telling me this. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you've got to do it. So he kind of, even if it weren't for Danny, I probably wouldn't have gone back then. Do you know what? Thankful I did because people that obviously it was the last game of the season but the reception I got and stuff like that I, I appreciate it uh, you need that like yeah. you need to know that you're you were loved by a club like you don't you put your heart and soul on the line on it yeah alright um I'm gonna ask a a harsh question mm. do you think mm. you were seen as a bad boy in football 100% <laughs> why your own thoughts I don't I never shade behind like trying to beat around the bush like, I was one of those people that I was for me I felt I was true to my roots I'd always be with my friends like my friends and my friends I didn't leave like you know like they say this old typical thing I know it's probably not so much in football like but you hear a lot of rappers or American people talk about it Ah, uh, you can't forget the hood. You can't say that. I'm not saying I've, I forgot the hood because I wouldn't live there. Yeah. I wasn't around that. But my friends that was from there, that was my friends. They're still my friends to this day and I'd always be with them. And I would, as much as it was only probably when I went to Crystal Palace, I started to go out with my football teammates. I never really used to do that. That's crazy. But I'd always like holidays, I think. Holidays, I probably went twice with football people. Three times, I think. And the rest of just all the boys. I always go with my friends. Always. My friends, my brothers, my cousins, we'd all go. Do you know what I mean? That's, like, that's a whole flight, man. Yeah. <laughs> it should be, be sometimes. I think one time Wilf was there. Wilf was there as well. One time there must have been, I'm not lying to you, there must have been I B for there must have been 45 of us. See, I'm not enjoying it. That's it, 45 men in one group. I, I'm like, I, didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I'm like, I've got to go, one, man. <laughs> no, I've been as one day we went and I was like, I looked and I was like, this is mad. <laughs> It weren't, it weren't actually that, that, that one time we, that we went IV for, I was like, this is crazy. Walking down the ship, there's like 45 people. Everyone's just walking up and down. Then you go down to, <clears throat> it was an IV for we was. We went down to buy a jet apartments. <laughs> then there's, everyone's from Croydon's there. So uh, then I start uh, yeah. to see everyone. I'm like, <laughs> then there's these other 45 I'm with. I'm like, so, so I'm standing out. You, you look at it and there's like 100, there's 100 people from your area. I'm like, this is just crazy. I'm like, I want to go home. I might as well just went carnival or something. Yeah, I might as well went carnival. might as well went carnival. That's the, right. The, 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 the carnival just went from Croydon to Ibiza. That's, do you know what? I'm going to agree. You were seen as a... Because I've seen you growing up watching Summer Ball, like playing Summer Ball against you and stuff. It's like you weren't one, per, weren't one of the people you, should, you could like mess with. But you gave off that impression. And an example I'm going to give is you're all prem footballer mm. having fisticuffs outside a nightclub and getting community service. Yeah, that, but do you know what? Again, like people look at that is like, see me. I'm a, this is because because there was a diff difficult conversation I had with Roy Hudson, and he couldn't understand it when I went in. Is I'm a kind of person. Is like, if you do wrong, stand up and be owned to your wrong you've done. Yeah, like, like we all make mistakes. We can all go in different ways, but no one don't realize that actually happened with someone trying to hit my missus. Okay, now see, I didn't know that. I don't I, look. I don't want to portray that you should go around hitting people yeah. and all this stuff, but I was a kid that grew up to defend yourself. 
That's just how I grew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone else is different, right? And in my eyes, as far as I'm concerned, I defended myself and my family. That's the way I see it. Okay, I took the brunt of it. I got the community service. Natural, because you're a Premier League yeah, footballer. Yeah. You shouldn't be seen to be doing that. I understand Throw the that. book at you, innit? Yeah, yeah, they're going to throw the book at you. And this just shows how much they threw the book. You don't go to a magistrate's court and they send a district judge. That tells you already what they're trying to do yeah, to you. If yeah. you go to a magistrate's court, they should give you three judges. Yeah, yeah. They brought a district judge just to basically give me the maximum punishment they could. Wow. Do you understand what I mean? <clears throat> so already I was tainted with that, which is no problem. That's, 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 that's my own fault for making that own mistake. But I owned it and I said to Roy, I'm not, I'm not, I'll own it. I've got no problem with it. I made the mistake in terms of you've been arrested, you've been caught X, Y, Z, but I'll own it. Yeah. And I won't have no shame from it. I defended myself and what I defended my family. Some people say it's wrong. Some people say it's right. In my eyes, how I grew up is right. Yeah. yeah. But see all of that, that's not put in the paper. All it is is yeah. footballer, fight, community of service. Course. Of course. Of course. Because you're dead, dead. It's like Michael, I watched it uh, off topic. I watched the, Michael Jordan's mum said to him, there's, there's no news better than negative news. Yeah. It sells, isn't it? Yeah. Like, even that, like, see that news? Even people that they say that they know you, they're your friends, they're from your area, they're laughing, joking, they're happy that's happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, like, you're going to get the hate comes from everywhere. And normally the hate comes from people that's close. Oh, shit. And that leads on to my next question. Mm. Throughout the whole career, mm. the highs, the, like, let's say the heights, did you have friends that were just around for the ride, like, just there for the nights out, the dinners, the holidays? Listen, and I know I'm in where I am now, but coming here, took me out of that bubble that you're in. You don't realise it when you're a Premier League footballer. Probably more so because I was at my home in London and stuff like that. Yeah. You are in a bubble and you live in that bubble of that West End lifestyle, all that sort of stuff. Friends that always calling you Friday, Saturday, oh, where are you going, what are you doing? And then when you come out of that, you realise who really was your friend. Yeah. And I've realised that now. And, and you know what? I don't like to say that I'm always correct, but I've seen it where... All my friends that are my friends, they've been here to see me. And those people that might watch this, they know who they are. And they don't need to prove their worth to miss friendship. Yeah. And the people that didn't come, I knew you wasn't really my friend anyway. <laughs> do you get you, Yeah, they you know, know who they are. Kind do you of yeah, they yeah, know yeah. who they are. But it's not even like, you're not down here. Like, mm. this, is, this place is sick. Like, yeah, I've only yeah, seen yeah. the party side of, mm. you gave, you've given us a tour of the whole island, basically. Yeah. And it's like, Who's got your back when yeah. you're not in the yeah. limelight anymore? Do you know what I'm saying? It shows and, you the, 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 but it's for me, it shows you the people that was there just for the limelight. Yeah. They was getting their own limelight. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like, just to give an example, there's some people I used to have a box. When I first went to Paris, I had a box, right? Now, that box could only fit 10 people in. Now, obviously, I used to have always my family and yeah. that stuff, yeah. like my missus, because my missus used to sit in the, with the kids in the, the family box that the club provided. Yeah. Now, and you start to see changes then, and you start to see it. Because the, the, I was like, the next scene, there's no point in me getting a box. I said, what I might as well do, the money I paid for the box, I might as well buy. Because what I've done at the start of the season, instead of having a box the next season, what yeah. I might as well do is buy 10 season tickets at the start. So I know I've got those tickets. I can give them to whoever. Yeah, your family's can... are still in the box. Yeah. That means everyone can Yeah, sit. so like the, my mum and all that. My, if my, So if, when you've got the family box, if your mum comes or my nan comes, I'd put them in that box. Because yeah, yeah. my nan's a bit older than my mum. But everybody else, I'd get them tickets. When the box went and you start to see those people don't come, you start to realise, oh, you're just trying to chase the lifestyle. You're like, yes, see what you're yeah. trying to do. Do you know what I mean? Um, you've got to live because your career isn't long. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, you're winding down now. Mm. But obviously, you've, you've still got the head to play. Yeah. But you've got to live. No, nah, you've got... You to, like, for me, I would never, like... The only thing I say to footballers is, is go and enjoy yourself. Enjoy the good moments. Do what you're doing. Be careful what you're doing. Yeah have the right people around you because you never know like when people are trying to shaft you or whatever, have yeah. the right people around you and enjoy it because you know it is like, okay, I'm still playing football now, but you realise that bubble will die soon. And if you're one of these people that needs to live in the bubble, that loves the life of the bubble, you're in trouble. you will struggle. Yeah. 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 So now you're in this part of your career. We're going to expose you're in Cyprus. Mm. Surely before you came here, there must have been a few good offers in England. You know what it was? It's coming off the back of the Huddersfield, Huddersfield um, move. I was like, I don't really want to go away from home again. Yeah. Because I don't forget, my, do my daughter was, my, yeah, my middle daughter was three. Okay, yeah. 
And I come home from Huddersfield once and I went to go back up there and she said to me, why have you got to go to that place again? Now, my middle daughter, she don't speak. She's quiet. <laughs> she's not really like, she don't, she's not outgoing. She don't really involve herself in people's business. She just more watches. Yeah. Do you understand I me? Mean? She's more a watcher. And when she said that to me, I was like, oh boy, you hit home. Do you understand what I mean? Like, she's thinking about it. She's seen that there's a difference in like, what's going on. So I was like, I don't really want to do that again. And then there were some options that come, but again, it meant like, not being funny, I'm in London. I live in London. Going to play for a team in Manchester or Birmingham. I'm away four or five nights. Yeah, again. yeah. It becomes strenuous. So you miss like, a lot as well. You miss a lot. And your kids are growing up and I was like, am I going to go and move my family there for one or two years? No. And then when the Cyprus thing come, I told my kids and my kids started crying because they was happy because they got Cypriot friends. Yeah, okay. So they, they understand wow. the culture a little bit, you know. <laughs> and then uh, when I say, when I, since I've come, I've never looked back. Like, Paphos has been fantastic. Brilliant place for the kids' family and it was a Paphos great club. How different is the standard of football from England? Like, have you come here thinking... I'm going to walk through everyone. Or if you come here and like your eyes have been open. No, it's not easy because you, you, if you come here with some sort of status, they target you. Yeah. Okay, no. okay, yeah. Because they, they, they're looking at you that, right, this player is of this level. So, right, we need to make sure that we need to, just like normal, kick him, <laughs> target him, the referees, wh wherever it may yeah. be. But the standard generally is it will catch you by surprise because it's technically a very good league. Technically, and it's, it's improved a lot since I've been here in the last three years, three and a half seasons. And it's improving more because they're bringing more and more, obviously, foreign players. Yeah. It's improving. That's, that's, that's sick. Do you... I'm a big, big, big believer in culture. Like, I've taken my daughter already. My daughter's too. I've taken her back to Uganda and stuff like that. Are you worried that your, your kids may miss out slightly on their culture? Because you, no. you can't get a... A jerk and rice and peas out here and stuff no, like that. Dad will cook that for them. <laughs> dad will cook that for them. They, 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 look, is again. Then you got to look at it in a different way. Is like, as to how I grew up, my kids are not going to grow up. Okay, do you understand? I'm saying yeah. living back in the UK, I didn't live like on a council road. My kids didn't live like council road, council estate, housing estate. My kids don't live like that. They didn't yeah. live like that back in the UK. My kids didn't have neighbours back home. They can't go to the neighbour back home and knock for milk. Like, is that out for your house as well, yeah? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, we don't, no, but I'm saying is, is even where I live like that, yeah. back in the UK, you don't have a neighbour to go and knock and say, you're going to go and have milk. Okay, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. The people don't think like that. It's not like when I grew up, my mum would say, right, run next door, or run to the, the sweet shop and go and get me some milk and yeah. tell him I'll pay him later. Okay. You had that community vibe. Yeah, yeah. My kids didn't grow up like that. So they, they're, all right, they're going to lose some cultural issues, but they're going to gain so much because I don't want my kids to be in, I don't want my kids to see the things that I saw. No, I don't yeah. even want them to probably see 10% of the things I saw. I can respect that. And I, I have to fight that. Do I want my kid to grow up as I'm gonna, a niche mm. in a good area and stuff? Or do I want them to have be street smart? You just got to teach your kids and trust them to... Look, you got, you got to look at this. Like you said, you're from Uganda, yeah? Uganda is your culture. Yeah. Like, I don't know how you grew up, but I'm, you, I know that you're from a certain area, yeah, right? yeah. so your child is not going to grow up how you grow yeah, up. Facts, facts, facts. You're they doing yeah. whatever you're doing to make sure they don't grow up like that. And that is my job as a parent. You know, is I've, my kids have been Jamaica. Do you understand what I mean? So they are, yeah. they've seen their culture yeah. to that. That's the best culture I'm going to show them and only what I am maybe showing them at home. Yeah. I don't okay. want them to see anything else. Facts, yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I don't want my, do you think I want my daughter to know what it's like to go on a bus and say you've got to jump the bus without paying for the bus ticket? Like, they're the trials and tribulations yeah. that we had as kids. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's phones in the world now. There's so many different, different things. Yeah. you got to go, when we as kids, like, not being funny, if you weren't over, like, a certain stature around certain people, you go to the mall and hide your phone. Yeah, he's a victim, yeah. Like, God knows what it's like back now. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm a local boy. I'm from Croydon. You're sitting there worried about your, your child. Your child's going crying on a Saturday saying, I'm going shopping. Now, how do you know, what's happening now is how do you know if your kid's coming back? Do you know what I mean? Well, I've never, I've never had it put like that, to be fair. But... Yeah. So what's the, what's the plan after the ball? Well, look, to be honest with you, it's, it's, well, obviously you're halfway through the season now. Well, not nearly finished the season now. I've done my coaching badges. 
I want to try and have a go of the coaching here. So I think it'll be easier to get into my family settled here so yeah. I can try it here. And I want to try the coaching and hope that that does go in the right way. But you never know. I, I might get into it and be like, you know what? I know if, I'm not worried about doing anything else after that. There's TV work. There's so many things you can do in football now, so many avenues. Yeah. But the most important thing is I want to try the coaching because a lot of coaches have said to me in my late years of career that they think I should do it. So. Nice. Go for it, man. Go for mm. it, man. But Jason, thank you for sharing your story, man. Thank you for having us here. Yes. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's good. Long time coming. Nah, long time, long time. Thank you, though, man. Thank yes, you. Yes, bro. We got one.